I've got a number of your messages about the Facebook link. There was a little hitch with it. It's been rectified long ago. So we've been live for quite a while now. So, but thank you. Thank you so much for the, the feedback we got on that. Um, yeah, Bobby? So, so on, on this, this, because you're a stakeholder as well, your party's, in, yes, your, right. your, your movement is going into this election and seeing how things are played out. You heard from the Electoral Commission, there's been calls for a forensic audit so that there's some level of transparency, trust increased in the electoral body going into a crucial election like this that we have ahead of us 80, 83 days from now. Uh, just like uh, it's been observed, there was an audit of sorts in 2016 in a cooperative manner. So you were part not, of it. It's not a strange call. I see. It's not a strange call at all. The mechanics of it can be determined. Mm -hmm. and done. But at the heart of this problem is a winner-takes-all system. It's not a Eight call. years not where one party has been frozen out of authority, executive power, and access to decision-making and resources entirely shut out and desperate to get in there. And then once it's in there, desperate to, to remain there for fear of leaving and being shut out. That, that, that winner takes all. We, we've taken adversarial politics so far that after elections, we are not able to reconcile. Ideally, the assumption is that you fight hard, get into power, and then cooperate with a loyal opposition because we are trying to copy the British Westminster system. Mm -hmm. but. Where the opposition is completely shut out of access, as we have designed our systems, then there is desperation. And so the Electoral Commission is always under pressure when elections are due. Always under pressure. There, there is no incentive for cooperation, particularly if they themselves don't put out a posture that is inviting. If their language is not inviting, if their systems appear slightly opaque, then there is serious room for these kinds of situations to happen. But please, the onus for growing trust rests squarely with the Electoral Commission. Mm -hmm. They have to satisfy political parties, entities, movements, independent, non-partisan candidates like Mr. Chemating, that irrespective of your status, Irrespective of the voter's status, they will have access and the access will reflect the true desire of the people. Access to the register to vote. And that once people vote, their choices will reflect the right posture they took at the booth. So you, you now you have two problems. And... and uh, perhaps without trust building, those two problems will dog us uh, consistently. First is, if there is a doubt on the register, suppose somebody arrives and their name is not in the register, what happens? Mm -hmm. I arrive at my polling station. I have a card issued me legitimately by the EC, and I find that, uh, uh, as Sami is saying, my name has been deleted in the preparation of, of the register. What happens to me? If you have such instances above a certain percentage, it influences the election. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our elections are very tight. Yeah. Well, the we, gaps are very, very tight. The three, three votes have determined an MP. Uh, yeah. yeah, there yeah. are MPs who are in parliament mm -hmm. for a difference of one vote mm -hmm. and three votes. It's very, very crucial. So, so if I arrive there, once the EC, I stood in a queue, particularly the basis of this new register, we stood in a COVID queue. Some years, people said that we, we agree that we all die of COVID. <laughs> I remember the language at that time. It was very shrill. If we queue, we would we die. Of course, I said that we <laughs> wouldn't die. We didn't we die. We didn't die. die. <laughs> we didn't die. I believed in a new register, which we got. I believed in a new register. And that is the basis for this current register, the 2020 register. Mm -hmm. Because most of us are holding that basic card from 2020. So now you are adding on and you are editing. Suppose somebody is holding that uh, card and is comfortable enough not to go to a, a, an exhibition center only for you to delete their name and they arrive and, and they can't vote. Mm -hmm. What happens? It's a recipe for chaos. It's a recipe for chaos because power is, is slipping, is alternating. Eight years. Winner takes all. 
It's a recipe for chaos. The second thing is the coalition and announcement of results. That is also to do with numbers on the register. Actual people who turn out to vote and the numbers that can be used to declare the results. Mr. Banobu, at the moment, there are difficulties, and as he said, with the entire structure of the register and the data management systems. I keep hearing consultant, consultant. As far as I'm aware, and the dons will tell me, a consultant is to tell you what you know already, so that you are sure that you know what you know. In the language you don't understand. <laughs> In the language you don't understand. But what we are hearing is that it looks as if the consultants are the ones who are implementing your data system for you. That cannot be sustainable for an institution like the Electoral Commission. What is the state of the data management systems that you have? Because part of the information we are picking up is that managing entry and access to the data, which is controlled by a body other than the EC, creates the disparities and confusions because somebody is doing something mm. and then somebody else has to pick up what has been done to put it somewhere. And, and, and in that case, you will clearly have issues. So now if you go in and you are going to uh, uh, announce results and you are collating and the collation is different from what is on the data, the main data, by the time the announcement comes, nobody has uh, uh, what do you call it? A, a remedy. And in 2020, whether it was innocent or not, it happened several. Mm. It happened several. It was innocent. We will assume and presume it was innocent because it's been tested in the courts. But there were several different announcements. Mm -hmm. There were several different announcements. So the coalition process is also part of the registration issues. So the two things, I think that the EC must moderate its language and be as open as possible and build and where a demand by a political party will not subtract from your constitutional duty and will aid in building trust my brother take it on take it on i, I don't think uh, uh, an audit should be by price waterhouse or it's an unnecessary Thing because you are bringing in another body which is not an election manager to interfere in the election process. It's not necessary. But as was done before, mm. bringing the political parties and getting their concerns uh, resolved. I mean, if uh, uh, you even confine yourself to whatever the NDC say they have found, within a matter of an hour or two, you can reconcile everything they say they have found. Because sitting it's, together. It's upon you made the point because in 2012, I think it was KPMG that was brought in for, during the presidential. That was during the during the petition. That was a hearing. The, the, the yeah, petition. That's, that's the petition. Twenty thirteen. Uh, that was they, a hearing. They, they, they were so, tasked to uh, 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 review the what do you call it, the, the pink sheets. sheets. So, so there's, the there's there's evidence to the effect that this call for an audit, as indicated, is not new. It's been done before in a number of election we, years we, gone we by. We are not even as, 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 as a step. So, so, so the electoral commission. So I, I made the point. I asked this question because when. Mr. Tete was addressing the press two days ago. He indicated that the, the register since 1992 has not been audited before. That is, is that true? true. That is true. In so, 2016, uh -huh. uh, when there were complaints from NPP that there were some uh, issues with the register in terms of some foreigners who should not be there, a committee was set up, the Justice Craft Committee, mm -hmm. And the findings that they, 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 they were able to come out with, they indicated that all these challenges they are seeing, the exhibition could be used to correct them. So there was not an audit like they took the register to check this. Now we are done with the exhibition. But, but, but the exhibition mm -hmm. system is not a the exhibition is, check. That is no, what, even in the report that is of what they recommended. Is, they spoke it, about validation. That is what they test. recommended. It's, we it's did not, the exhibition, all right. It, it sir, doesn't stand up to sir, the exhibition. Sir, sir, so, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, I think you should tell Mr. Bano Bill to look around this table. Look around the table. Eh? There is a butterfly here. There is an MPP member here, PhD holder. There is an NDC member here. Professor Jampu is about to talk. There is a journalist here, a reputable journalist yeah. here. Obi anyone walk Are you not worried? You know what? 
You know, you know what? No, no, no. You know what? Like, I mean, like, we, 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 we are uh, talking uh, about issues. Are you defending the independence? No, no, no. no. We oh, are oh, talking oh, about issues. Oh, it's not why will you do voter transfer without a lie? Everybody is. Why will you do a voter transfer without a basic system that will ensure that the transfer is legal? The transfer is being done properly. Why? You know, technology okay. develops as time goes. Okay. Where is the okay. technology? Let me come in. Let me come in. Hold on. Hold on. Let me come in. Hold on. You went and got into new technology and you are talking about technology development. It develops with time. Thank you. What? Okay. And we started so the technology from a point. you have gone to no, no. buy. We started from a point. What is the gestation uh, period? We started from a point. A time will come, we have to in, in, input a lot of the issues. Ah. Depend upon the demands of the day. In 2020, why didn't this happen? No, no. We started with this. Why didn't this happen? The electoral commission started with manual registration. Now we are using biometric registration. I see. Please. So let, I let, see. let's. Um, Can I see? So what I'm saying is that. Hold on, on, on to your point. The yes. figures that are being quoted 243,000 bloated, 15,000 here, 4,000 there. The EC, sitting with the NDC, can resolve those All figures in a matter of an hour or two. There's no reason to banter, to raise temperatures and about that. If we are talking about a million people, Two million people. Then clearly we are in a serious uh, danger. <laughs> Where we are now, you need to simply move in and resolve the matter. Mm. And you resolve the matter by building trust and confidence. Right. You cannot resolve the matter by saying that, well, I have resolved it, so you go and come back. And it, you don't do that. Mm. So we are saying that once the data, what has changed since STL? STL had control of our data. We screamed and yelled and screamed and Sunday. yelled and got rid of STL. Now somebody else has control of the data. What's different? MPP, uh, what's has, different? Has what is different? What is different? So now, why is, the, why is the EC not building consistent capacity as Mr. Banobio is saying that technology evolves? Why are they, and if everything depends on data management, the way they, why are they not building the best capacity in IT within the institution? To manage themselves. Why are they relying on externalities and consultants and this and this and creating all this doubt? Because the data can be manipulated. Let's face it. Mm. If an outside authority has access and you vote, that authority with access to the data can give you a result that's not your vote. And by the time that happens, it's too late. That's the second responsibility the EC has. You have the data. I can go stand there and vote, but what you tell me is the result is nowhere near what my thumb asked for. Mm -hmm. Simply because you have access to the data and you can manage the data in ways that as an individual voter or even as a political entity or a political party or whatever, it will be too late for me to question because you are controlling my fate in your hands. Yeah. So that data business, the data is what the EC, look, they should organize an excursion. Part of the audit, they should organize that education and take us where the data is. Let us see the data. Let us the meet the consultants. Let us and all that. tell us everything about that data. So that when I go and stand there and vote, I know that when I vote for Mr. Chematin, indeed the vote will be counted fairly for Mr. Chematin. In the interest of trust and transparency. Oh, but that is the only reason why you build trust. That is why we must trust you. You understand? And, and, and if this trust, as a prof is saying, is good, then there must be a cutoff point. <laughs> Two months to the election, we shouldn't be distrusting ourselves. Two months to the election, all the distrust matters should have been resolved by now. Two months to the election, we should agree that we have agreed to disagree on a few points, but we are going into the election happy. So, on those two points, if I'm holding a card legitimately issued by the EC, I have a right to vote. Indeed. Whether my, uh, it's no business of mine being told that a so so and so officer deleted it, I have a right to vote. I have the card. Two, after voting, I have a right to ensure that my vote is properly counted, is in the proper database, and it reflects my vote. If I vote for Mr. Chemati, Mr. Chemati doesn't need to come and stand there as an agent and then, then, then before the right thing is done. The okay. EC must be fair to everybody. The data must be sacrosanct. Everybody must accept that the data is being wisely, effectively, and transparently managed in the interest of all of us so that nobody ends up suspecting that we voted, Something has been done. but what came out sure. of the data management process is different. Uh, Professor Jampo, see, all of these calls directly in the interest of trust and transparency, because uh, your Babia somewhere brings another layer of the call that even the political parties should be allowed to see 
the various protocols every step of the way of the ECS data management system because of all of these doubts? A concern you 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 support? Um, yes, I. First of all, let me respectfully and politely disagree with my colleague, right. Joshua Zato, that uh, mistrust for state institutions, in my view, isn't good. We have to build credible state institutions to ensure that they thrive so that they can be doing the kinds of things that they are supposed to be doing so that we wouldn't always have to be policing them. It's coming one too many in Ghana. There are so many institutions of state, people operating within them, and they are being paid to do their work. They don't do it. And um, uh, there is no trust about, about whether they will be able to do it well or not. And take, let, us, let us be mindful of the fact that if you don't trust um, these state institutions, then their work becomes difficult. We may not be able to... We don't have to always second guess, you know, um, when, when we are dealing with them. And then if it comes to electoral commission, for instance, we must be mindful of the fact that without the kind of trust that state institutions, and especially independent com um, institutions like electoral commission, mm -hmm. are expected to have, if you don't get that trust, then we are in for chaos. If people don't trust um, the electoral commission, then that alone is a recipe for conflict because mm. then they are always aggressively on the defensive. Um, in, in monitoring the kinds of things that they do. That's why I've always spoken about public trust deficit in some of these state institutions and advocated them for the need for the, um, the challenge of trust deficit to be um, addressed. Now, that's aside. So we can talk about criticism of the Electoral Commission being normal. I mean, mm -hmm. Electoral um, NDC, when it is in opposition, will criticize race issues, MPP, when it's in opposition, will criticize and race issues. I think these are normal. But we should never create an impression that um, mistrust in these institutions are good elsewhere. Um, that um, he studied before, I've studied before. State institutions are trusted. Mm -hmm. You can't just go to sleep knowing that um, the, the right thing will be done. Mm -hmm. Who mails, who can mail his passport here in Ghana using the PO box system? You cannot do it. We don't trust the postal address system. But that's where somebody can write you a check and post it. The institutions there are trusted that they will deliver. And so public trust in, in, in state institutions, particularly, um, um, the electoral commission, in my view, is something that is key, and we shouldn't say anything that downplays that, especially when they are also expected to be independent arbiters. But that, that aside, I, I think, um, you know, Martin Pebu sitting there, he doesn't like it when I tone down when I'm dealing with the electoral commission. But um, yes. you, should, um, you should note that... <laughs> That commission currently is being chaired by my boss. Mm -hmm. And so I tend to, I tend to always, uh, see, having worked with her for a long time and knowing her heart and who she is, sometimes I want to be careful um, because um, um, I know her. If, if you know somebody and you can vouch for the person, there are things that you want to approach with a certain trepidation. I've listened to um, Mr. Bano Bill, and yesterday, before coming here, mm -hmm. I had to do some calls and consultations and uh, because at one point in time, I thought the NDC was being too unreasonable. So I called some of them and said, well, you are being unreasonable. And um, they were putting their case. And I also had to do, you know, I have to say, it, I mm -hmm. had to play a certain Indeed. role to bring Mr. Barnaby here because I felt that he should be here to speak um, in defense because um, I felt maybe the NDC was being too unreasonable. Very but important. listening to Sami Jemfi, and the kinds of things that he's saying, vis-a-vis -vis what uh, Mr. Barnaby has said, I think respectfully, um, let there be ceasefire. Um, let the Electoral Commission accede or yield to the demand that is being made. Um, if auditing of some sort has been done before, uh, let, let, let this be done 
for the purposes of ensuring that um, the trust deficit that confronts the Electoral Commission is addressed. And for the purposes of also ensuring that we don't push ourselves into an unnecessarily tensed um, election and then we don't get into implosion because of some of the things. Because uh, he's raising clear, serious concerns. You didn't discover these things yourself. We discovered it, and then you said you are addressing it. And then they are saying that what shows that it's not happened elsewhere. So let us all sit around the table and then look into it. Um, if it will not undermine the independence of the Electoral Commission, if it will not spoil anything, then our appeal, and I want to make the point also to the head of the Electoral Commission that, you see, like I keep saying, I know her. She means well. But you should also know that if you preside over such state institutions, there are people with diverse interests. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you may be looking in the right direction, but there may be people under you who may also be working to sabotage you. There may be people who may be incompetent, not you necessarily being the incompetent person, but then you may be working with people who may not be so competent, and they may be doing things that may be sabotaging you. And so such um, interventions like audits would help us to be able to identify who did what, okay? And if they are remedial interventions, we would put in place to address um, the challenges um, with our electoral processes. And these things would also show up the image and the transparency of the commission. So um, I don't want to protract this. I think I've listened um, enough to Sami Dimfi. I've listened to uh, Mr. Biu. And Mr. Biu is not saying that the kinds of things Sami Dimfi is saying um, are not true. He's not saying that. And so if that is the case, then rather than um, we allowing a demonstration that will pick up our political temperature, I, I would plead and um, I, I would make sure that um, Jim is, is, is an elderly sister. I will continue to talk to her that look, if acceding to the demand for all of us to, all the political actors to sit together to compare notes and to see who what is wrong and how, how to address them. If these things will not undermine the independence of the commission, if these things will not take away the role of the commission, but if these things will bring about peace and they will bring about transparency, then it is good for the image of the commission itself to allow um, um, these, these things to go on. And so let there be ceasefire. It is true, Zato has said it, um, political parties in opposition are always against the Electoral Commission. When they are in power, they are in bed with the Electoral I mean, this is something that you said over and over. But this particular demand that is being made, listening to the comments around the table, it appears that they are legitimate um, demands. Let them be addressed amicably. And let the Electoral Commission have its own institutional peace as it prepares to um, conduct and the upcoming elections. Since we are no, students, no, no. they about a trust it, issue. Okay. The academic literature is literally dividing on that. Because right. sometimes what happens is too much trust can lead to what? That is what dictators. Mm -hmm. okay. yes. Too much trust yes. can lead to what? Uh, 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 public agencies well, uh, doing wonderful things. So right. there should be a certain healthy level of mistrust and distrust, yes. especially among very, very uh, critical true. and important uey, uh, agencies. Okay. So you need it. It's a healthy dosage of it is important. Yes. Lama people is joined us. Healthy dosage. Yes. So, uh, so uh, it's, who it's who healthy. measures? Who <laughs> uses it? <laughs> 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 who uses a teaspoon to measure it? It's not a teaspoon. It's a cocoa bowl. Thank you. So 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 that's that's a position you support. Lama people, welcome. Welcome. Go to work. It's an You always need a certain dosage of mistrust. Ah, the day you go to sleep thinking that <laughs> duty bearers will do the right, you are finished. Ah, haven't you seen a Kufuado? Hey, Have you seen the Iraq ah, war? Have ah, you seen the Iraq ah, war? Ah, the you weapons the Iraq of war, mass, you, mass destruction. Mass destruction. Okay. Okay. The dossier was set up. They, they, they Colin just, Powell was structured so much so that uh -huh. even when he appeared before the security okay. council, he said, those are the things. Yeah. Thank it you. can lead to bad decisions. Mm. Right.